takes a break. That's right, you did. I, said, I, remember the, like, I like, know his hair. I like, uh, my picture in the hallway. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Look at his little face. Look at baby Julius. We're um we're looking at old yearbooks. I brought all the all all of my old yearbooks in here today because Troy had asked me to. So now we're looking at all these old pictures. <laughs> Was he in? Was he in third year? Um, no, he left after he left after this year. Yeah, because he he started out <laughs> in the eighth grade class, and then he moved oh, to honors this English is, this one. Is, this is ever, 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 him and three. Tori like, and like, Bryce and Peachy her. and Michael. Huh? I remember her. She left. She left last year. Didn't she? Mm -hmm. Graduated. I oh, miss Angelina. Which person? Angelina, sorry. You were, you were uh, kind of millennial. You never <laughs> saw them? <laughs> yeah, I never saw them. I remember looking through that. Did you hear about people? Did you hear about Con Maloney recently? Yeah. 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 You went to jail or something like that, right? Yeah, he uh, well, just like just recently, he tried to rob a store downtown and got shot. He got shot. Mm -hmm. He got shot in the leg. The um, the person who ran the Connor Maloney. Connor Maloney. Remember him? Yeah. He tried to rob a store downtown, and the store owner shot him in the leg. That yeah, it was this, it was the second time. Yeah, he's not dead. What did he get shot with? A gun. I mean, I don't know what kind. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> you said get shot. That the using them store cars, having them shotguns behind that thing, blue is on. I guess if you what? if you own like a convenience shotgun. store or something, you gotta I mean, protect I would, yourself. I would too. I would too. Christian's here. Where's Brendan? <laughs> Always oh, here. No Eli yet. Yeah, we'll see. Marcos. Oh, I forgot Marcos is in this year. Yeah. Marcos wrote a sweet thing in here too. He was like, "You're the you're the worst person in the world, but you're also the best." <laughs> Who is scary? Marcos. Who's scary, Nate? Me. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Nate and Christian are just laughing their heads off at old pictures of y'all. <laughs> okay, here comes Eli. Now that I've, I don't even know where I, I have no idea what happened to some of them. Wait, I thought my sister put something here. <laughs> There's a lot of kids writing your favorite uh, student in my yearbook. <laughs> is my kid? No. <laughs> you never claim to be though, Troy, and that's what I respect about you. I just I'm gonna show everyone because you guys know that Troy is my nemesis. First year, first year he wrote this in my yearbook. After he was in eighth grade, you may insult me every single day, but I'll let you live for another year. He says I bully him, threatening me. Bullying is not the same thing as making fun of. <laughs> is is Caleb in there? No, he's not. Um, I I had to look around for a picture of him. He he. I looked through the whole yearbook and he's not in it. I did find his senior photo online. Um, yeah, because I Wash and Kathan like couldn't put a face. They were like, I remember him, but I couldn't. I just wait. Who are y'all looking for pictures for? Here? Um, <laughs> oh yeah i taught english in choir room a couple times um so he was a lot more blonde like kind of ginger when he went here but do you remember him i don't i remember uh that was his and i don't remember to be fair, he was very quiet. Like he, he barely spoke at all. See, I remember him, but he had longer hair. He that's not the haircut. He, he, he was he was at the uh one of the proms one year. 
And I think, oh. yeah, I got those. I got those pictures. Okay, that's good to know. I got pictures uh, too. I'm gonna close this door. Yeah. Oh, no, I have seen some your photos. Yeah. your photos. Yeah, it, no, not, 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 I look like a, like a haggard old woman. You've done this to me. I, I dye my hair to I keep out it. the grays that you put there. Not you specifically, but you know, you're definitely responsible for some of them. All right, we've got a few things to do today. Um, first thing we're going to do is go over the vocab uh, that y'all should have filled out your sentences yesterday. All right, well, I would open your laptop and fill in some answers then so you can have it to study with. He's not in here. I don't even have a picture in the class. That's so weird. <laughs> That's so strange. Okay, our words effrontery, insuperable, mercenary, quail, capacious, vacillate, debonair, quixotic, chafe, and supercilious. I don't mind if y'all are looking at those. I mean, I brought them for you to look at, but um, just ooh, make sure that you're also paying attention because you do have a quiz on Friday. Okay. First, first sentence, being a famous film star sounds like a blank dream, but if you're talented and exert self-discipline, it could become a reality. It sounds like this kind of dream. Guys, get your laptops out. You're going to want to write the answers down. Oh, you know what? It's it's not insuperable, but I totally get why you would think that. And I might want to change the answer because those two were oh, exotic. Quixotic. Yes, quixotic. It's very uh, very idealistic. You might not actually be able to achieve it, but or you feel like you wouldn't be able to achieve it. I will I will maybe change that sentence for the test. I've already made the test, but I might change it anyway. Number two, sometimes finishing high school feels like an blank obstacle, but you're all so close to the finish line. What was the first one you said, Ian? Insuperable, yeah. Feels like you're never gonna be able to do it, but very close, 20 days actually, uh, 20 school days until graduation. That's not days in all, I'm not counting weekends. But. Um, number three, after years of threatening my life, Troy has the blank to tell students I have been bullying him. Which of these words? It's not true. We have the evidence. Which one of these shows effrontery? Yes, he has the effrontery to tell students that I've been bullying him. Okay, number four, because he was so handsome and blank and made such a good impression, it took people a long time to realize that he was, in fact, a creep. A creep. He's a creep. But he was handsome and one of these words, and he made a good impression. It's number seven. I can't really see it. I mean... Yes, number seven, debonair. Is one of my things in your way? something in your way okay number five those of us who attended allegro in the cathedral are so appreciative of how blank our new building is which word capacious capacious yeah we got a lot more room here number six and i heard someone uh disagreeing with this sentence actually at the end of class when we went over the words um but one great thing, in my opinion, about our student body is that there are not many blank kids who feel they're too good to socialize with anyone else. Most of our students are able to get along with each other. Which one describes students who do think they're too good to hang out with anyone else? Oh, uh, 
Yeah, yeah supercilious. Super <laughs> yeah, behaving or looking like you think you're superior to others. We don't have too many of those in my opinion, but some people would disagree. Um, number seven, when the burglar pulled a knife on the family they were robbing, the father blanked in terror against the wall. Quail is correct. Okay, number eight. Gold diggers are known for their blank efforts to the point of marrying someone just for their money. Gold diggers are known for their blank efforts. You were not here that year. Oh, so sorry to hear that. I don't know what might be going on with Google Chrome. I'm on Google Chrome. Uh, yeah, he set my classroom on fire one time. <laughs> yeah, he literally did. He uh, he stuck a piece of some kind of metal something in the heater while it was on, and it, like showered sparks and like <laughs> caught fire for a second. It wasn't like the end of the world or anything, but it wasn't good. All right, we're, we're on number eight. Gold diggers are known for their blank efforts to the point of marrying someone just for their money. Which one has to do with mercenary? Yes. And sometimes mercenary can be used as a noun and it basically means like a bounty hunter or something. Yeah. Somebody who does something kind of like probably kind of sketchy for money. Um, okay, number nine, I'm normally a fairly patient person, but I do blank over having to repeat instructions numerous times. Which of these would I do? I'll have to come up. The question is, I'm normally a fairly patient person, but I do blank over having to repeat instructions numerous times. Chafe. Chafe, absolutely. I chafe at it. Um, and remember like chafe can also mean like literally irritate, like your clothes might chafe you sometimes, like if they're wet or something, but it can also, the way we're using it means like emotional chafing you're chafing me all right and for the record in this um if you guys made your own copy it didn't have the ed on the end and i realized that yesterday and went back and changed it um but this is also a word we've had before so you should probably know it although he blanked about whether to attend cfc or clemson earlier this year he's finally made a decision Not capacious. If he was going back and forth, but he finally made a decision. Oh, Vacillate. 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 Yes. See? Yes. All right. Do we need to repeat any of the answers? Okay. Um, the only one I might change for the quiz is either going to be number one or number two, um, just because uh, I guess it would probably be number one because they could be kind of confusing okay um so i just kind of want to like let everybody know where we're at in the year i just like i just said graduation is 20 days away uh 20 school days away um like involving weekends i don't know how many days that is oh it's so soon oh it's so soon huh um interesting I haven't heard that, but um, but your grades will be in for me before that anyway. <laughs> yeah. I all of our grades are not due June 9th. That's not even. 
<laughs> There's a whole week of school for most people after that. That doesn't make any sense. I'll look at the calendar, but yes, Troy? I'm not sure. The ones from yesterday? I haven't looked yet. Um, but I will let you know. Um, so we actually don't have all that much more, all that many more assignments for the rest of the year. Uh, but I kind of wanted to let you know what's coming up, particularly for those of you who your grade is on the low end of the scale. And like I said, nobody's failing this class. I feel really good about that. Um, but there are a couple of bigger grades coming up and those will be the ones that, yeah, it could, it could kind of put you on that bubble. So for the rest of the year, we have our vocab quiz on Friday. I'm about to introduce our one project assignment, writing assignment for the quarter. We'll have a test, which don't freak out about the test because you kind of get to pick what the test is on and it's open book, open note, everything. So you should be good. And then we'll have four daily grades between here and the end. So just to kind of, you know, give y'all a heads up as to what's coming down the pike. And also just so that, you know, um, you have like a certain number of grades per um, like different kinds of grades. Like I have writing and projects. That's one kind of grade. I have tests. That's another kind of grade. Quizzes are another kind of grade, daily grades and then participation. And we have not yet had this quarter a test or a writing project. So it's important that you guys do really well on the test and the writing assignment so that it doesn't drag your average down. So let's look at what that writing assignment actually is. I know that some of you guys are having issues with Canvas and I hate that for you. Um, I don't know what the deal is. Let me go to your class actually, because this is AP. Right. <laughs> He's dumb. <laughs> Oops. Okay, I'm publishing this right now. I've already got the rest of the stuff published for our for the rest of the week, but okay. Pay attention, even those of you with yearbooks in your hand, because this is your biggest grade of the quarter. You're going to be writing an essay about the importance of being earnest, which we are finishing this week, um, and how it applies to Victorian literature. So it's a classic example of Victorian literature. Um, I should have deleted that. Last year, we didn't have time because of COVID, and we just, uh, just watched the movie. Um, but it exemplifies a lot of typical characteristics of Victorian literature, which we learned from our notes, and your notes are still available. Um, so over the next few days, week, you'll all be writing a standard five paragraph style essay in which you argue how the importance of being earnest qualifies as an example of Victorian literature. Oh, who's trying to come in here? Let's see, Eli. How it qualifies as an example of Victorian literature by explaining how it applies to three different typical characteristics of Victorian literature or values of the Victorian time period. I'm also giving you, and you'll see this at the bottom, a pre-writing notes worksheet that could help you organize your thoughts. And you're not going to turn in the notes sheet, but use it to help organize your essay. And we'll look at that in just a second. So your essay should have an introduction with a thesis statement and a concluding paragraph, along with at least one paragraph for each quality of Victorian literature that you're addressing. If you feel like you need more than one paragraph to talk about one quality, like if you have if you have a couple of great examples of how the play, I'm sorry, it says film, play addresses the Victorian ideals of domesticity and you spend a lot of time talking about both of them, you might want two separate paragraphs for that. And that's great, but you still need to write about two more characteristics of Victorian literature, even if you give 20 examples of how the play shows them, but don't give 20 examples because that's going to be too long. The thesis statement should be very easy for all of you because you can certainly create your own, you don't have to stick to this formula. But because this is an argumentative essay with three points, you can basically plug your own ideas into this thesis outline. And it's, I bolded it. So this is what, like, you don't, you don't have to stick to the, oh my God, what did I do? How do I get rid of it? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I never touched this thing. I'm just trying to, whatever. Um, so your thesis statement can, and I would encourage you to have it look like this. 
The importance of being earnest is an, is an excellent example of Victorian literature because it exemplifies the Victorian ideals of blank, blank, and blank. And you plug in whatever the three qualities are that you're gonna be talking about. And you spend a paragraph addressing each of the things that you put in your blanks. This is a really standard formula for argumentative essays. It's not super creative, but it's pretty much foolproof and it gets you where you need to go every time. Remember that for college. Um, a lot of y'all will probably have to take a freshman writing composition class. Um, don't worry, it's not, it's not that big a deal. Uh, but just remember that because it's very, very easy, pretty much foolproof. So to help you, I gave you guys this note sheet and you need to make your own copy of these, but this is not a thing you're gonna turn in, but go back over the play and think about what we've been what we've been reading. And as we continue it this week, try to find three of these things that you see some good examples of in the play. Um, you're choosing three of them. So you might wanna talk about religious skepticism and secularism. So go through the play and think, what are some good examples of that? write a paragraph about that. Then you might wanna talk about domesticity, which is the home and family. So you go back through and think of some examples that work for that. Traditional gender roles, those two can kind of coincide a little bit, um, but you're picking three. And just to remind everybody what utilitarianism is, because that is a long and complicated word. It's where the thing that works for the highest number of people is the right thing to do like for the greater good. So I would recommend that you uh, make a copy of this and kind of take some notes on your own because it will really help you organize your essay. Um, this is due next Wednesday. And we'll have some time, obviously tomorrow, we'll have some time to start working on it. Um, I know we haven't quite finished the play yet, but that's okay. Um, you don't really need to finish it in order to get started on this. Uh, but we have, 29 minutes left. So let's start reading act three. Act three is the shortest act in the play. Um, we will definitely finish it probably Thursday, which would be great. So what happened to Mr. Wilson? To who? Mr. Wilson. Um, he left. <laughs> yes, I do know why. It's just to be clear, he was not fired. And a lot of people think that he was fired. In fact, I even heard some students say they got him fired, and that's not accurate. Boy, I wish I remember what page this was. It was like 68, maybe. Okay. So act two, a lot of stuff happened. Um, the truth kind of came out about everybody. Um, Gwendolyn and Cecily found out that neither of the men they think they're engaged to is named Ernest. Um, some of them think that Ernest is dead because Jack's come in pretending that his brother Ernest is dead. And they're like, oh no, your brother Ernest is here. Um, so that, that was a fiasco, especially because both of these women specifically want to marry men named Ernest. That's very important to them. And since neither of these men are actually named Ernest, they feel like they don't want to marry him. But both guys are trying to get their names changed today. Um, they've asked Dr. Chastable if he can, Dr. Chastable, Reverend Chastable, if he can uh, perform a christening, which is usually done to little babies, but um Algernon says well I was christened but I don't remember anything about it so I'm gonna do it again and Jack who we know was an orphan who was found in a handbag he was never christened uh because he didn't have parents and you know who would take him to a christening so where we left off um, the, the guys are kind of fighting. They were fighting over muffins and being very petty with each other. Uh, whereas the women who at first were kind of like, um, kind of sniping at each other because they thought maybe they were interested in the same man. So they both thought they were in love with someone named Ernest Worthing. 
Um, as soon as they realized, oh, these guys have lied to us, they're like, we're best friends, let's turn against them, which is, you know, fairly standard. So act three is starting at the morning room at the manor house and Gwendolyn, Corey and Cecily, I are at the window looking out into the garden. Gwendolyn, Cecily, Gwendolyn, Corey. I don't know why I just said Cecily. Corey, are you with us? Corey. Corey. <laughs> he was uh he was 11 from stranger things all right i don't know what's happened to corey he must be dead um can i get somebody else to read gwendolyn yeah go for it all right They have been eating muffins. That looks like repentance. The guilt is loose. That was at all. Could you cough? But I haven't a cough. Looking at us, but the frontry. A frontry. They're approaching. That's very forward of them. Those who serve at dinner price sums. Certainly, it's the only thing to do now. So Jack and Algernon come in, and they're whistling and trying to be cute. This price sums. A most distasteful one. But we will not be the first to see. Certainly not. <laughs> I like how she's literally like, we're not going to be the first ones to talk. We're upset at them. We're not going to speak to them. Hey, Mr. Worthing, and just like completely disregards what she just said. Gwendolyn, your common sense is invaluable. Mr. Moncrief, kindly answer me the following question. Why did you pretend to be my guardian's brother? Algernon. Ian. That certainly seems a satisfactory explanation, does it not? I don't, but that does not affect the wonderful beauty of his answer. Can you doubt it, Miss Fairfax? I have the greatest confidence in this. The highest is in Prussia. This is all from German citizens. The various various ways of inflation appear to be quite satisfactory. That seems to be to me kind of a snack of truth upon it. I'm more than content with what Mr. Moncrief said. His voice alone inspires one with absolute credulity. Then you listen to Dipper? Yes. I mean, no. True. I have questions. <laughs> I had to learn. There are principles of state that would not surrender. Which of us should tell them? The task is not for the one. Could we not both speak at the same time? An excellent idea. I know it always speak at the same time. Horrible. Will you take the time for me? Certainly. We're going to say this at the same time, okay? Your Christian names are still an insuperable barrier. That is all. Sterling is. Y'all can try. <laughs> Ready? Our Christian names is that all. But we are going to be christened this afternoon. Yeah, that didn't work. For my sake, are you prepared to do this couple things? I am. To please me, are you ready to face this fearful ordeal? I am. Third, talk of the quality of the sacrifice. Where questions of some sacrifice are concerned, men are infinitely beyond it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
We are. They have moments of physical courage of which we women know absolutely nothing. Go. Go. Enter Merriman. Eli, that's you. And you cough loudly. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> um okay i can't speak now um <coughs> ahem ahem lady bracknell jack good heavens oh shoot lady bracknell is brendan and he's not here well shoot i feel like does it ev literally everyone else have something to read now i gotta take a sip of coffee that's totally fair um Nate, I feel like you're my understudy for everybody. Will you be Lady Bracknell today? You're you're in his way, right? <laughs> Okay, so Gwendolyn has kind of like run off to go see Jack because she wants to get married to him, even though her mother, Lady Bracknell, was like, no, absolutely, this man was found in a handbag. I'm not going to have you marrying a piece of luggage. So absolutely not. And Gwendolyn kind of left anyway. And she's like, she's come to get her back. And she says, like, her dad's very unhappy. We're not going to tell him what's really going on. I think it's funny that she says, indeed, I have never undeceived him on any question. Like, if Lord Bracknell is mistaken about something, she never corrects him. Um, but she, she's like, you are gonna stop talking to Gwendolyn. This is not okay. I am engaged to be married to Gwendolyn, Lady Bracknell. Nate? Oh, God. You are nothing but And? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like that's how it goes. <laughs> Seems to be 
That lady is Miss Cecily Cardew, my ward. Mr. Moncrief and I are engaged to be married, Lady Bracknell. But the number of engagements that go on season to see the above the proper average of statistics had laid down for our guidance. I think some preliminary inquiries on my part would not be out of place. Mr. Worthy is Mrs. Gardner at all connected with any of the larger rail railway stations in London. I merely desire information until yesterday. I have no idea that there was any family or persons whose origin was maybe terminus. Meaning a train station. So it's, it's, since Cecily is Jack's ward, she's like, are you also like, are you connected to a larger railway station? Shh. Pay attention. Looks perfectly furious, but restrains himself in a clear, cool voice. Miss Cardew in this in uh, uh is the granddaughter of the late mr thomas cardew of 149 belgrave square sw uh gervais 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 park dorking survey and the sporeman fifeshire and b <laughs> that's how it's said we are just always inspired confidence, even in trains yet. But what proof? Oh my God! But what proof have I of their authenticity? I have careful, carefully preserved the court guides of the period. They are open to your inspection, Lady Bracknell. I, I have no strange errors in that club. Miss Cardew's family so, so, solicitors are Mrs. Markably, Markably, and Markably. Ah, Markably, Markably, and Markably. A firm of the very high position in the profession is the. I am told that one of the, one of the Mr. Markleys is occasionally to be sued in. At seen at dinner party so far, I am satisfied. How extremely kind of you, Lady Bracknell. I have also in my possession, you will be pleased to hear, certificates of Miss Cardew's birth, baptism, whooping, cough, reg registration, vaccination, confirmation, and the measles, both the German and English variety. <laughs> Life current incident, I, I see. Though perhaps somewhat too exciting for a young girl, I am not myself in favor of premature experience. Woodville, oh, the time approaches of, the, of our departure, we have not a moment to lose as a matter of a form this morning. I have better. Max, you and Mrs. Cardi had to leave little porch. <clears throat> oh. oh, about a hundred and thirty thousand pounds in funds. That is all. Goodbye, Lady Bracknell. So pleased to have seen you. A moment this is worthy. Hundred and thirty thousand pounds in the funds, Mrs. Cardi seen. Mm -hmm. most attractive young lady. Now that I have looked at her, few girls of the few girls of the present day have any really solid qualities in any of those bodies that last for any of time. Needless, I regret to say, in any age of services, come over here that here that dear pretty child, because your dress is. Sadly simple, and your hair seems almost as nature might have left you. 
Rude. Do you think kids who also all that? Thoroughly. Experienced friends made for this big really marvelous result in a very brief space of time. I remember recommending one of the young lady Lansing, and after three months, her husband did not know her. And after six months, nobody knew her. Counting to Ralph's sweet child, not the side of you is what I want. Yes, caught as expected there. Even the state social possibilities in your profile, the two weak points in our age are it is one of the principal and it what oh, and it's what a profile. The chin is a little higher here. Style largely depends on the way the chin is. They are worn very high just at present. Algernon. Yes. Here's the state social possibilities in Mrs. Cardi's profile. Julie is the sweetest, dearest, prettiest male in the whole world. Uh, don't care. Two pence. Two pence? Uh huh. Uh, social possibilities. Never speak good directly on society, Argonaut. Only people who can even get into do that. Dear child, of course, you know that Argonaut has nothing to do, but his debts can do depend upon, but I do not approve of mercenary marriages. When I married Lord Brock, Brock, Brecknell. Brock, Brecknell. I had no fortune of any kind, but I never dreamed of a moment of allowing to this to that to stand in my way. Well, I suppose I must give my consent. Thank you. So she says that she will let Algernon and Lansing marry Cecily. Yeah, she will let them marry Cecily. Yeah, she says that she will let Algernon and Cecily get married because Cecily's pretty and she looks like she'd be a good wife, and because Algernon's not really rich, he's in a lot of debt. And because of that, she feels like Cecily is not a gold digger, so she'll approve of this marriage. Cecily, you make you make kiss. Cecily, you make kiss me. Ma, thank you, Lady Brighton. Lady Brighton also addressed me as of Augusta uh, for the future. Thank you, Aunt Augusta. The mirrors of the past that you. Thank you, Aunt. A lot of thank yous. A lot of thank you. Thank you, Aunt Augusta. These people and a lot of things of long engagements, they give people the opportunity to find it, finding out each other carries it before the marriage, which I think is never advisable. I beg your pardon for interrupt for interrupting you, Lady Bracknell, but this engagement is quite out of the question. I am Miss Cardew's guardian, and she cannot marry without my consent until she comes of age. That consent, I absolutely decline to give. Oh, grounds me, I asked Argonaut. It is true. I may almost stay at Austin. Ostentatiously. Ostentatiously. Mm-hmm. Uncle was an eligible young man. He has nothing, but he makes everything. What more can one desire? It pains me very much to have to speak frankly to you, Lady Bracknell, about your nephew. But the fact is that I don't, I do not approve at all of this moral character. Yeah. Uh, character. I suspect him of being untruthful. Untruthful? My nephew are not impossible. He is outstanding. Yeah, I have no idea what that is. Maybe somebody that went to Oxford. I'm not sure. I'll have to look that one up. I fear that I fear there can be no possible doubt about the matter this afternoon during my temporary absence in. Oh, man, London on <laughs> an important question of romance. He had, he obtained admission to my house by means of false pretense of being my brother sure. under an assumed name. He drank. I've been I've just been informed by my butler an entire pint bottle of my Perry, uh, yeah, I'm not French, fruit, 89 <laughs> wine, I was specially reserving for myself. Continuing his disgraceful deception, he, he succeeded in the 
course of the afternoon in alienating the affections of my only ward, he subsequently stayed to tea and devoured every single muffin. And what makes his conduct all the more heartless is that he was perfectly well aware from the first from the first that I have no brother, that I never had a brother, and that I don't intend to have a brother, not even of any kind. I distinctly told him so myself yesterday afternoon. Oh, Nate, you're back just in time to read your line. <laughs> oh, I love it. Me? Yeah. You like that size? Yeah. I got all kinds of sizes. No, I love this. Okay. That's great. Thank you. Of course. Oh, hey, this is Ray. After careful consideration, I have decided to entirely overlook my nephew's conduct. That is very generous of you, Lady Bracknell. My own decision, however, is unalterable. I decline to give my consent. Well, I'm really only 18, but I always admit to 20 when I go to evening parties. What? She lies about her age, so people think she's a little older. You are perfectly right in the of the slight observation. Indeed, no woman shall ever be quite accurate about her age and look so calculated. 18 by bidding to 20 evening parties, but I, I will not be very long with work. You are a free from the experience to tutelage. Tutelage. Yeah. So I don't think your guardian's consent is all after a matter of any importance. Pray excuse me, Lady Bracknell, for interrupting you again. But it is only fair to tell you that according to the terms of her grandfather's will, Miss Cardew does not come legally of age till she is 35. Okay, we're going we're gonna to actually stop there because we don't have much longer. So he's kind of like playing the upper hand here. Jack kind of, uh, he's got a little bit of leverage. He wants to marry Gwendolyn and Lady Bracknell says no, but she's consenting for Algernon to marry Cecily, but he says no. He says she's not actually of age until she's 35 and I'm not going to give my consent. You have to have my consent before they'll get married. So it can kind of be used as a bargaining chip. Like if you let me marry Gwendolyn, I'll let Algernon marry Cecily. Um, we only have a few pages left of this, so we will finish it on Thursday. Um, I have not yet looked to see if y'all turned in your Victorian journal prompts uh, from yesterday, but I hope so. The prompts three and four, not one and two. Um, but I will be taking a look at those a little later. And if you didn't turn them in, then I'll hold you tomorrow. Um, and that's it. That's it for today. So I will see y'all tomorrow. Oh, you, okay. You didn't, hmm. When is Wednesday? Tomorrow's Wednesday again, yeah. Um, I will, I'll email you the prompt and hopefully they'll be able to sort something out with tech. That's very frustrating. All right, see y'all tomorrow.